I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. Senator John Thune labeled the solutions the Biden administration has proposed to combat high gas prices as, quote, gimmicky on the Senate floor Wednesday. Thune echoed other Republicans' claims that the current administration is adverse to domestic energy production. As gas prices hover around record highs nationally, the minority whip specifically knocked President Joe Biden's federal gas tax holiday proposal. This move would instantly provide some relief to consumers, though some warn it may not be the cure-all Biden seeks. Take a listen as Senator Thune explains. I just want to um, echo what was said by my colleague from Alaska because uh, what we're now hearing from the administration are ideas that they think will help ease the pressure on gas prices in this country, uh, but they're all gimmicky. I mean, it's, it's all, uh, you know, rebates, gas card rebates, or um, doing away with the uh, gas tax temporarily till September. Like that's going to do anything meaningful long term to address this supply demand crisis that the senator from Alaska just just alluded to, and and I have to say that um, this administration, uh, from the time they came into office, has, op has has demonstrated an open hostility to oil and gas production in this country, to ener energy production more generally. And the senator from Alaska was talking about the oil pipeline. We have one in, in South Dakota that was going to run through South Dakota, the Keystone XL pipeline, which was killed first day in office by uh, the Biden administration and, again, sent signals to those who produce energy in this country that we are, we are not interested in what you have to offer. Um, we want to move in a different direction, and that different direction, of course, is electric vehicles, which I'm not against. Everybody might want to get an electric vehicle. It's a free country, but the fact of the matter is we're going to be dependent upon liquid fuels on oil and gas production for the foreseeable future. And since that's the case, we ought to produce it right here in America. We have vast resources. It is an issue fundamentally of supply and demand. And as the senator from Alaska pointed out, uh, you look at Alaska, now we're talking about getting oil from Saudi Arabia, from Venezuela, from countries, other places around the world, in some cases run by dictators, instead of producing it right here in the United States of America. That's just tragic. It's just tragic. And the American people are paying the price for it. Why? Because in places like Alaska, where we have abundant resources, they shut it down. They shut down federal lands. They, they started denying permits to drill. And they killed the infrastructure that supports, in many cases, um, energy production in this country. And so, you know, a, a pipeline, for example, is not only the most efficient, but the safest way to transport liquid fuels in this country. We need liquid fuels. We know that. It's a fact. And we have the supply, abundant supplies, right here in the United States. All we have to do is simply access that. But instead, instead we're talking about gimmicks like a um, rebate, gas card rebate, or uh, a suspension, temporary suspension of the fuel tax in this country, which, by the way, would rob the Highway Trust Fund of the resources that we need to build out you know, this infrastructure in this country and to maintain it. And so it, there are just so many reasons and so many, on so many levels why these are bad ideas. So bad, in fact, that uh, Speaker Pelosi in the House of Representatives has previously referred to this kind of idea that the administration is now proposing as a gimmick and something that isn't going to provide long-term relief. It is fundamentally an issue of supply and demand, and all we simply have to do is turn it on. We've got to get the energy producers in this country off the sidelines, back into the game, producing oil and gas in America in a way that will meet uh, Americans' needs, daily needs, when they fill up their cars and trucks with gasoline at the pump, which right now is they are being punished unnecessarily uh, by an economy where we've got constantly rising gas prices, uh, average prices around $5 a gallon nationwide, uh, a, literally a doubling, a doubling of the gas price since this president took office. Direct correlation, direct correlation, connect the dots, to policy decisions that this administration has made which they're now realizing and trying to come up with these gimmicky ideas uh, to try and deal with an issue that fundamentally could be fixed simply by sending the right signals and encouraging, incentivizing the type of energy production in this country that we ought to be um, in, encouraging and 
and the energy producers in this country are up to it. They will meet the demand if we simply give them the opportunity. That's what needs to change. That's what this administration needs to be focused on, uh, not on shutting down gas and oil and energy production here in the United States. Mr. President, the Dobbs case will be decided by the Supreme Court in a matter of days now. And I pray that it will be decided in favor of life and that Roe versus Wade, a case that even, even, even pro-abortion constitutional scholars have criticized, will be overturned. But however Dobbs is decided, the work of the pro-life movement will continue. And that work, of course, includes advocacy, attempts to change laws to ensure that human rights of unborn human beings are protected. But perhaps most of all, it includes the daily work of providing help to moms in need. Helping moms and their babies is central to the pro-life movement. Pregnancy resource centers and other pro-life organizations provide a variety of resources to help women in challenging circumstances. They provide supplies for moms and their babies. They offer prenatal and parenting classes. They assist moms with housing. They help them connect with state and local resources. And they provide friendship and support and a listening ear to moms going through a difficult time. They provide agency referrals for mothers who choose to make an adoption plan for their babies. They provide places for moms and their babies to live while they complete their education or get back on their feet. During the current formula crisis, pregnancy resource centers have helped moms struggling to find what they need to feed their babies by providing them with free formula. Mr. President, you would think that helping out moms would be pretty uncontroversial. You would think that everyone, including individuals who are pro-abortion, could get behind helping a struggling mom find housing or access to prenatal care. But apparently the pro-abortion movement finds providing material help to moms in need and letting them know that they have alternatives to abortion somehow to be pretty threatening. Pregnancy resource centers have frequently been a target of pro-abortion politicians in the pro-abortion movement, which have sought to undermine their work. But things have gotten very serious in recent weeks. Since a draft of a possible opinion in the Dobbs case was leaked in May, pro-abortion extremists have conducted a campaign of vandalism and violence against pregnancy resource centers and churches. Just a few blocks away from here, one pregnancy resource center was egged and graffitied and had its door covered in red paint. A number of others have faced similar vandalism. And multiple pregnancy resource centers have been the victim of arson. A group claiming responsibility for a number of the attacks, Jane's Revenge, released a chilling letter last week in which it declared, and I quote, open season on pregnancy centers and started, and I quote again, or stated, and I quote again, we promise to take increasingly drastic measures against oppressive infrastructures. Rest assured that we will, and those measures may not come in the form of something so easily cleaned up as fire and graffiti, end quote. Well, perhaps it's not entirely shocking that some members of the extreme abortion movement have responded to the possibility of roles being overturned with vandalism, arson, and threats of further attacks. But this wave of violence is deeply troubling. And these attacks need to be taken seriously. And I hope that a G Attorney General Garland is developing a strategy to confront this wave of vandalism and violence and to prevent future and more serious attacks. Earlier this month, I joined a number of my Republican colleagues in sending a letter to the Attorney General asking about his plans for dealing with these attacks and preventing future ones. I'm disappointed that we have yet to receive a reply to our letter. And the President, not merely his spokesperson, but the President himself should be out there strongly condemning these attacks and letting everyone know that violent responses to the Dobbs decision will not be tolerated. Mr. President, after one pregnancy resource center was vandalized, its director said, and I quote, we are not going to let intimidation change what we're doing. It failed. It was pretty unanimous from the volunteers and staff here that this is not going to change how we will do business here one bit at all, end quote. And Mr. President, I know that attitude is reflected at other pregnancy resource centers. 
And I know that despite threats of violence, the work of helping moms and their babies will continue. Mr. President, the work of the pro-life movement represents the best of our American tradition, providing a voice to the voiceless, standing up for the human rights of those who have been denied them, and providing a helping hand to neighbors in need. I am grateful to all the pro-life Americans standing up for the human rights of unborn human beings and helping moms and their babies get the resources they need. And win or lose at the Supreme Court, I know that that work will continue. Mr. President, I yield the floor. I suggest the absence of a quorum.